those in favor of the nomination of Assemblyman Coughlin as Speaker signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Speaker Coughlin. I, Craig Coughlin, do solemnly promise and do, swear. Do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of speaker, of the office of speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly, of the New Jersey General Assembly, to the best of my ability and understanding, to the best of my ability and understanding, that I will carefully that I will carefully preserve all records, preserve all records, papers, writings, or property, papers, writings, or property entrusted to me, entrusted to me, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, and make such disposition, and make such disposition of the same as may be required by law, of the same as may be required by law, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear. And that I will bear. True faith and allegiance to the same. True faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick, I'm the mayor of this great town, and we're here today in the studios of TV35 for another version of Around the Best Town. Today I'm very happy to present to you a real statewide newly minted big shot, an official guy who has moved his way up to the speakership of the General Assembly after only eight years in the Assembly. Uh, one of my best friends and our colleague and my uh, the broadcast partner, Craig Coughlin. Craig, welcome back to the studio of TV35. John, it's, it's nice to be here. It's nice to be back in the studio, and it's always good to hang around with you and talk about Woodbridge. And I'll be doing a lot of your shows now since you're going to be so busy, but we're going to make sure we keep you active for at least a few shows going forward so that you don't lose your touch. Exactly. Thanks. I'm flattered. <laughs> and we still get to do some, some basketball. Oh, we're games. going to do some games. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, we're definitely going to do some, some games. So you are now literally, as some people say, the third most powerful elected official. Others say tied for second there's the governor there's the Senate president some say you're equal I think you're equal because nothing happens without both of you working right. uh, tell me about that that's very very impressive first congratulations well, thank you thank you very much it's well it's it, well it's impressive and but it, what it is is really heady stuff I mean you know, the job is a big deal job um, as you point out, you know, there are real challenges in the state of New Jersey, and and by virtue of the office, um, I'm going to have a say as to how we go about tackling those challenges. And so, um, you, you try not to focus. Uh, people will talk about it being the third or the second, tied for second, fourth on a civics chart because there's there's the the governor, there's the lieutenant governor. Oh, true, true. Uh, there's the Senate president in lines of succession. And what about the Supreme, speaker. Supreme Court? They're pretty high up there too. Well, they are, but I mean in terms yeah, of the, the line of succession. Mean. So, so if I get all three of those other folks out, I'm governor for 20 minutes or something. But and we'll, you'll, you'll come down and hang around with me. Yeah, sure. We can um, get Trump to watch have a party. <laughs> Trump for, even just for 15 minutes. Um, so, but you know, it, you try not to focus on that. You try to focus on the challenge at hand and the confidence that your your colleagues have in you. I mean, the the speaker, as you know, uh, is selected from a mem among the members, uh, and so it's a, it's a pretty big deal that your colleagues think that you, you ought to be the one um, to, to lead the, the House. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 it's just a remarkable thing for, you know, you got to love America. You really do. I, it, I grew up in South Amboy, as you know, didn't have any, you know, my, my mom and dad, and my dad died when I was a little boy, but, you know, my mother drove uh, cars for the Democratic Party, drove right, people right. to the polls. <laughs> it wasn't as if we came from a family or had some, uh, you know, tremendous legacy. Things, right, most know. of us are like that. Yeah. We're just regular people moved up into, exactly. you know, cool you know, positions. And, you know, and, and, you, and you're, you're fortunate, and, you know, it's certainly hard work, uh, but, um, 
you know, it's it's just a remarkable. And you hear the word humbling a lot. It really is humbling when you when you look or you think about the fact that the, you, you're in charge of this. It's really it's it's an awesome sort of humbling moment. And it's uh, it, it helps the politically with Central Jersey because throughout the state it's always been the North and the South. Correct. And and now thanks to our chairman Kevin McCabe and a whole lot of other factors, including yourself, Central New Jersey is is really back on the map with you in that position. Yeah, it, it, <coughs> as you point out, you know, we always talk about the north-south dichotomy and for neglecting the fact that central Jersey is really uh, different than both. Um, you know, south Jersey is, is still developing, more agrarian. Um, north Jersey, obviously, most of the people live there, you know, bedroom community for the, the city in many instances. Mm -hmm. But central Jersey has its own unique, you know, character and challenges. So, yeah, this puts us back. You know, I think the, la the last speaker actually, uh, the last uh, person to lead a house was Senator Lynch when he was the Senate president. Right. Before that, it was... Um, Karcher? By Alan Karcher, who was from Sarah, who's right. in the district that I right. represent. So um, it's been a while. Uh, you know, we don't have it happen from Central Jersey very often. And so. Middlesex County now has the second most primary voters in, in the state. Second largest county in the state. Uh, and and second, you know, as you point, as you point out, second most uh, voters. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's important for our region. You know, it really is. I mean, ours is... Well, those other places have their unique challenges. We're, we have transportation infrastructure is critically, perhaps more critically important to us than anybody else. Well, yeah, I'd say that we have all, obviously, all the highways in the state cross not only the county, but right here in Woodbridge. Correct. We've got three train stations, mm -hmm. two major train lines. Right. So you, the talk, governor's talked about on the campaign trail, New Jersey transit and infrastructure, and now you're in a position to really make sure those issues are tackled. Not a coincidence that the transportation chairman comes from central Jersey. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> He's from uh, Mercer County. Lives in Mercer County, but represents a big piece of, of Middlesex as well. And the governor's coming in, you know, fresh after eight years of a, a different governor, a different party. So that presents a whole host of, I'd say, opportunities because he's been out, you know, campaigning for a couple of years, really. I mean, yes, I started talking right. to him more than two years ago about him running for governor, but he comes in with a lot of ideas and a lot of um, issues he's been talking about. So you're going to be busy. We're going to be busy. I mean, you know, look, it, it, we're switching from the Demo a Republican to a Democrat. Democrats now have control of both houses and the governorship. Uh, uh, that that can be an that's a, is an opportunity to accomplish an agenda that uh, many of us uh, ran on to some greater or lesser extent, um, but also face poses the challenges we see. You know, our colleagues in the, well, not our colleagues, but our counterparts in in Washington have Republican control right. at every level, and they have struggled. Uh, to get an agenda accomplished or to really define an agenda. So you want to avoid that, um, and we'll see. You know, as you point out, the, uh, Governor Murphy uh, is, uh, ha has had laid out a clear plan for himself. Um, and it's important that the legislature weigh in and, and define its own identity. You know, one of the things I talked about in, in my acceptance speech was, uh, or my speech, was the fact that we're, we're three stool legs, you know what I mean? And we each, we have to make sure that we have a chart our own path if it's necessary. Well, let's face it, the, the assembly, you know, gets second yeah. status compared to the Senate. Sure. And you said, and we've talked about, your goal is to keep that body relevant, to keep it together, to make sure people don't take the state assembly for granted. Correct. Correct. And, and and I think we do that by being thorough and being thoughtful and, and not being afraid to take on real challenges. And and, uh, and if we go first, uh, so be it. And do you have any personal goals that you want to see in the next two years? Sure. Um, well, as... Uh, you know, I want I want us to have a culture. I mean, culture within the, the body because it call, falls into the kind of couple of things. Uh, there are things that I have worked on legislatively that I want to get accomplished, like my, my out of network bill for surprised out of network billing. And uh, we, you know, we go to the hospital and you bump into a doctor you've never seen before and you get a bill. I mean, we're going to try to eliminate that. There are things culturally I want to accomplish in terms of the the assembly, as we talked about. I want to make it a, th a thorough, thoughtful, 
process. I want to, you know, I don't like when we, we spring things on people and boom, all of a sudden it's done. I think we should strive to avoid that. You know, inevitably there are going to be situations <coughs> where things have to happen in, in sort of rapid order. And being thorough and thoughtful doesn't mean you have to be slow either. Mm -hmm. uh, it just means you have to keep on working at it. Um, I think we're going to have to face, we're going to have to face the real challenges of f figuring out how we provide property tax relief for middle class people. I think we can do that in part through school funding. Uh, you know better than anybody what the impact is uh, on a community. With the, what we do is we, we don't set the, the property taxes in Trenton. We send, right. we send money and hope to all, and help to, you know, offset that and then help you find ways to go ahead and do some of the great work that you have done in terms of you know, uh, growing your tax base. So that I always thought, yeah, I always thought the state got too much blame for the property tax issue. Right. I mean, really, it goes back to people that running for governor, being governor, and tackling the issue. But it really is not the state's job because we set the budget. We put what we want to spend, we put what we want to raise, sure. and we spend it and we raise it. And and the state just has to, in my opinion, keep giving us the same amount of state aid, and I'd be fine. Right. But and it's hard the, for the governor to control that. It is because <clears throat> you know our revenues fluctuate. We we have lots of uh, bold and ambitious plans. They get expensive. Um, you know, transportation costs continue to grow. It's hard. Public, you know, transportation costs are so expensive. It's right. remarkable. And getting growing all the time. Right. I mean, you talk about they're gonna, we're going to we have to do something on the portal bridge. It's critical oh. to the region, not just to, to the state. No, we're talking about ten billion dollars. And like every <laughs> other transition, I mean, I've tried to help Governor Murphy on his transition and spent about six hours yesterday with the new treasurer talking to the people in OMB. And it's always a challenge every year to do the budget. But sure. when there's a change of administrations, right. it seems like sure. the magnitude of the problems just gets you know just grows exponentially right. the other thing I'd like to do for me you know as a personal goal uh, is uh, and this is uh, we're, you and I are not perhaps not surprisingly of, of a similar mind is you know I think we we, we have if we want to be a great state we have to do some things fundamentally we have to feed people f first and foremost and and so I I'd, uh, I'd like us to address hunger you know too many people go to bed at night hungry too many people uh, have unreliable sources of food. Um, I know you're doing that with your Have a Heart program, right? Have a Heart, uh, February 14th, want people to donate 214 pounds of food or $214, don't businesses, individuals, but your passion's always been hunger and you got yeah. the bowl for hunger. Had the bowl for hunger. What do you mean, 20, 20 something thousand 20, dollars a 20, year? Yeah, we've hit, we hit close to 30. We, over the, so I've been eight years in, in, in the legislature, or we've had eight of them, I think. Um, and we've raised about $140,000 over right. those years for the food pantries in the district. Um, this gives me the platform to be able to kind of expand that to other places and, and, and focus on that. You should have every bowling alley in the state do a bowl for hunger. <laughs> Maybe. We should I mean, it'd be a great challenge, you it know? Would, it would be. I mean, it's, that would, that's not a bad idea. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> you should. Your uh, your family's always been a big part of your career. Every place you go, you know, publicly, uh, your wife Tish is involved. Your boys, when they're not in college or working, are always with you. Yeah. And the last, um, you know, 60 days has been a whirlwind of events. It has. And your three sons and your wife are always there with you. Yeah. Well, they are. And, you know, that's a blessing that I have a family that's close to kids who, won't, who don't mind hanging around with them. I mean, you know, my sons are young men. My oldest guy's 28 and Vincent will be uh, 26 and Nicholas is 22 uh, so to have the ability to have your children with you and to have them be in part of it and really care about it uh, is something that's really remarkable and special and I'm, I'm really very fortunate that my wife and I you know we married 30 coming up on 32 years um, she's a true partner in, in uh, this stuff and um, it's just it just makes everything John everything so much better that you're sharing it with people you genuinely love mm -hmm. that, you know, that you love and that you know, can can share in that. So, yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate in that regard. And they had a big day you know, for our family. Mm -hmm. the, the swearing it was historic, um, and so it, it was. But it was more special because they were each of them when they Nick scooted off from school and came home right. and spent the day. So. Um, it was good. You get me jealous because my daughter's 2,000 miles away in Houston. 
I'm sorry. But what are you going to do about it? You know, <laughs> they go to school out of town, they stay out of town. I don't have an excuse to go see my, out of town to go see my kid. Right, right, right. Well, let that be a lesson to you watching. If you're a kid in high school and you want to go to college, don't go more than two hours from home. That's right. There's plenty of schools in Central Jersey or at all in New Jersey and just around. So don't do that to your parents. That's don't right. move out after you graduate college. Come happened. back to Woodbridge. Aaron went out to Pittsburgh. Went to Pittsburgh, loved Pittsburgh, stayed there. Met a boy, you know, yeah. and he went to Houston, so she went to Houston. Don't meet boys, girls. Don't <laughs> do it. They're evil. <laughs> so the one thing you and I have always uh, done together and been known for is our uh, broadcasting of games. Because we're so good at it. But we're not really that well. I don't know. We're just, we love doing it. Yeah, we love doing it. I think we have a passion for it, and I think that shows. Right. I don't think, I, we're better than we were 10 years ago. Sure. Yeah. I'd never call us good at it, but no. we, we don't. We're no, not I'm terrible. I'm kidding about that. I think we're not terrible. We're friends. We, we get along. <clears throat> We just chat, and right. so people kind of get used to that as our style. And, stuff. and I love putting the kids on TV, yeah, because oh, the, the kids in town are just so good, right? And no matter what happens after a game, you put them on, and the yell say, "I don't want to talk. I'm afraid." And then they talk, and they're like eloquent and articulate, and they're great. Right, and they're good kids. You know, we get to see. We're lucky in that regard, right? We get to see these guys, uh, and I say guys, I mean boys and girls. Um, sort of in a different light because we get to talk to them before or after the game. We get to watch them. And, and some of them, uh, you do, do more of that, that we, we watch them grow up because you, you start off with the Mayor's Trophy tournaments. We've seen some of these folks, uh, some young men and women, play basketball since they were eight. Yeah. You look at like, I talked about Kyle Anderson's kid, that group of kids, you know, Pearson and Hughes yeah. and, and uh, uh, Nyers. They, we've seen them from probably the boys eight and unders right through their high school career. Those kids all played together. Same with the other girls. You had yeah. the uh, um, uh, Alex the Cardoza yeah. and the Waters and the Walsh and all them right. and, and, and the Brodniaks. We saw them at eight. Yeah. And then we saw them at almost 18. 18. Yeah, that's right. So what's your favorite sport to call? Um, I think we do... I like baseball best. That's my favorite sport, like you. I think we do basketball best. I think so, too. I think... Because it moves. Yeah, it moves. And I, I think... I think our... Production of football is remarkable. Lee and the crew, uh, it, it, I think it's first rate. Uh, I think you and I, because oh, we'll, we'll show up, folks. This is what happens. We show up, we get a roster with their names. If we get a roster, if we get a roster, and if, if it's in, a, if, if it's if in the right lucky, order. Because let me right. The little the secret is schools do things differently than we would. We want it in number order. We want it in it number helps. order because if I'm looking for number 32, I don't want to have to start not by class order, not alphabetically, which is kind of a typical school thing, but by number order. So, but we don't you know, we don't get to do much prep. We show up and we do the game. So I think you and I are better at basketball because there's only five names. No, we get to know them really fast. And, true, and, true. And, and you and pick you pick up that much quicker than I do. Yeah. You associate the number with the face with the I name. Get the kids. You do that much. It doesn't better than happen me. so quickly in football, particularly like the <clears> linemen. We can't always see their number and stuff like that. But so I think we do basketball best. And I, I like softball better than baseball because softball oh, moves quick. Along. The girls are so good. Absolutely. They could strike out and they'll smile and run to the well, yeah. the men. Hit the bat and walk. They sulk. They mope. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The girls they run, run. On and off the field. Yeah, the girls run on off of the floor. The guy in left field getting to the first base dugout takes ten minutes. You yeah. know, he's just taking his time, and right. the girls zip, and they're in the take dugout. Off all of his stuff. Right, right, off right. Pads, and you can do a softball game in an hour and fifteen minutes. Probably, and a baseball game could be two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. We've done some really cruddy games. Yes. Like baseball. I can think yeah. about being in, on the third baseline up in the air on the yeah. top of a van well, in a freezing cold rain. You remember that first that was the first game we're on top of the truck. It was Woodbridge's first home game on their on the new fields. We new wanted field. to be there. Right. It so, was yeah. brutal. It was you know, it's April first oh, or something. It was awful. Oh, God. Freezing Absolutely rain. awful. <laughs> brutal. But we've called some great players too. We always talk about Brandon Hall because right. now we see him because he coaches uh, Colonial ba at basketball. We called their game a couple of weeks ago. That was the, I think, the most fun time, the most fun group we've ever covered because of their success. Yes, they had great success. Remember calling the, the tip in play at Plainfield High in like the regional finals, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I forget who it was against. And then we went up to what is the old Uppsala College yeah. to do the state semifinals. Yep, and we talked about that, and I couldn't remember the kid's name, the tall center. It was Edmonds. It was Edmonds. Wasn't Edmonds, yeah. Six, seven, I think. Well, tall kid, yeah, yeah. yeah. He tipped it in at like three three tenths of a second. They were just, they, you, they weren't the, you wouldn't say they were the best team, 
but they had the right pieces in the right places yeah. at the right time, and they succeeded. They had a good run. And Brandon Hall, like you said, he could he could dominate a game and score three points. Yeah, exactly, because he was the, he was the best passer, assist leader, and played tremendous defense. And now he's a coach. Yeah, he's a coach. Now, we even called a hockey game, which in my case, I knew absolutely nothing yeah, me too. about I hockey. Still don't. And it doesn't stop us from right, doing it. Right. We just get up there and we make believe. <laughs> Never let your ignorance stand away your opinion. No, no, exactly. <laughs> so professionally, you're... That was the first game. Remember the first hockey game we did? Oh, that was electric. Right. It absolutely was. I always thought that they should have... Well, hockey right now is down. There's yeah, one team one for team. three schools. They have a good year, though. They have a very good year. But yeah. we had, what, 20 kids on the bench for three different schools. Yeah. Yeah. And that first night, I think it was Woodbridge Kennedy. I think it was. And the place was mobbed. Yeah. And I always thought that they should do a midnight, some schools do like a midnight basketball game. Mm -hmm. I thought we should have started a practice of a midnight hockey game the very first, first day you were allowed to yeah. play, December 1st. Yeah. We should have had a midnight game at the community center between two of our three schools every time. That one's good. That's right up. That's, you know, I'm a late night guy. So yeah. that's, that's right up my alley. So can you still explain icing? Uh, sure. When the, uh, <laughs> either it goes across two lines yeah. uh, or Unt when. Untouched. Uh, untouched, or when the player is, um, no, I guess that's I it. Can't, right? I can't. Of course, I don't know. I still don't know it. I, <laughs> so we'll be on the air doing a hockey game next week, us. folks. <laughs> Ignorance of the rule, rules, I don't know the rules of anything. Ignorance of the rules or, or of the game does not stop us from going on and right. calling games. Because people still love it. Yeah. Sure, because they're you, watching their You're kids, putting their, their kid on TV, they're going to... Their Tell friends. Grandma in Florida go on the line on. and go to TV 35 in the archives and see their kids scoring a goal. Exactly. That's all that matters, the kids on TV. Exactly right. And the little kids, too, we love now, you know, yeah. calling their games. Like, like we say, the Mayor's Trophy, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's all so good stuff. In your career, you're, a, you're an attorney. Mm hmm and you represent towns and, and other things, and now you joined, uh, got, sold your individual practice, right. and now with a larger firm, Correct. I guess it would be tough to be a sole practitioner and have the responsibilities of yeah. assembly speaker. It would be, I, I think it would be undoable, I think. I mean, I, I, think, I think so. The demands of the office are such that you need to, um, you're constantly on the phone, uh, you're constantly in, or well, not constantly, but often in motion because, you know, um, there are things that go along with the responsibility of, of being in charge. And, and there were 80 members. Um, for example, I'm going to go to everybody's district office. Uh, both parties? Both parties, sure. Um, I, I think that's the way you build. Um, you know, you build a, a body that works together. Republicans and Democrats aren't going to disagree on everything, but we're going to agree on a lot of stuff. And to the extent we can make that easier, we do it, I think, by um, getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you get to know someone, then you you may disagree, but you have a cordial relationship. It's gonna it's not going to be heated, and you never distrust people's motives if you really get to know them. And they're not going to blast you in the newspaper or on the floor. Or sure. yell or make a scene right. if they're if you're somebody they have a relationship with. Sure, and that's more productive, right? Because then you can guess. The other thing that has to happen is, you know, we're in a, we have an overwhelming majority of Democrats right. and stuff. But the, the, my Republican colleagues represent significant portions of the population, and their voice uh, needs to be heard. Um, and John Bramnick's not a bad guy. He leads bad. the opposition party, Absolutely, he's a and he's a, an easy guy to talk to, an easy guy to get along with. Yeah, so I'm going to work hard to do that. And so, consequent to your question, um, that means you have to work at this all, all day. You know, the, the days are pretty long, uh, and it's seven days a week. Um, but it's okay. Look, I work. Yeah. yeah, I beg people let me. Nothing wrong with working hard. Me to the assembly every two years, and this I worked at for a year. So, I've asked people to do it, and so I'm not complaining. It just means, right. uh, yeah, to be a solo practitioner and have to do all of the things that you know having your own business does in your a small practice. You got to do the you know the copier breaks is your problem. Right, right. Uh, <clears throat> you got you have those issues. I don't have those issues now. So. Um, so yeah, the, it, the firm has new firm has worked out really well. My partners are are terrific, and uh, you know we've we, we've been successful, and that's good. And the last thing I'll talk about is the the local uh, town council, the administration, all the people that have known you for a long time, work with you, like you, respect you. 
everybody was down there. Yeah. Our whole group was down there yeah. on January. It was the fifteenth yeah. for the swearing in. I mean, we had oh, I the think, ninth, January ninth. Oh, the ninth. You're a week early. Yeah, you're right. The governor was the sixteenth. Yeah. You were the ninth. We, the place was packed with Woodbridge yeah. people. Well, thank you, and thank you for coming down. Most of you know that I have been a member of this esteemed body since 2010, representing the great people of the 19th legislative district. There they are. I'll try to get you better seats next time. <laughs> but beyond that, I suspect that you don't know very much about me. That is, unless, of course, you read the political blogs, in which case you know that I am low-key, relatively unknown, and a backbencher. <laughs> so you can see how I got the job. And I'll never be underestimated. But who I really am uh, is a guy who grew up in South Amboy. A proud, yeah. a proud product of the public school system and the son of Jack, who passed away when I was four, and Claire Coughlin. It was a place where my sister Cindy and I were taught that if you were honest and you worked hard, you would succeed. That if you cared about your family and looked out for your neighbors, they would do the same. I grew up at a time when John F. Kennedy was the president. Our country's future was bright with idealism and dreams of what would be. It was a time when public service was called a higher calling. And, that our, and while our nation's challenges were great, we believed we could fix them if we put our minds to it and work together. I still believe all of that is very true. And I know that everyone here on this stage is here because we believe that we can make a difference. Each of us has something in our lives that has led us to run for office and to get involved. For me, it was election night 1968, Nixon versus Humphrey. As I recall, it was very late in the evening. I was watching the returns with my mom, and I asked her, who did we want to win? She explained her choice with an eloquence that was as understandable to her 10-year-old son then as it is profound to her 59-year-old son today. She said she chose her candidate because he cared about people like us. That simple statement, the basic notion of government helping people has been my inspiration ever since. It is it, when, when, that, that people care enough to take off, and I mean, I had to take a day off, most people, uh, had to schlep down to Trenton for early morning, we had a little breakfast first, and um, I think I said you were kind enough to introduce me that morning. Uh, you know, as I looked out, I got to see my life. I had, there was a kid from South Amboy where I grew up who we played Little League with. There was right. my, my law school buddies and my family, even extended family. So my, my cousins had come from, uh, from upstate New York. And, and then, of course, the people here in Woodbridge that I live life with all the time. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the group that we have here in Woodbridge, that rep the council and you and the, and the directors and the folks who, who make up the Woodbridge municipal government, um, have the unique, I think it's a unique distinction of being people who genuinely like and care about each other. Right. And, um, and, to ha and to be part of that group, I, I think I am, because uh, I care and like them, and, and, and they have obviously demonstrated how much they care and like me. Um, to be part of that and to have your friends come down. and. Uh, you know, when I walked in that morning and you guys were all standing there waiting for me, that was really right, right, right. You know, led by you. I started um, the standing ovation, started standing ovation on the ovation. way in. We were it waiting. It really was. So I got to see my life kind of laid out in front of me, and you know, most people don't get that chance. So I had, it was really, you know, that day was just an unbelievable, incredible day for me personally. One that, you know, more profound. Getting married and having my children. 
book boy, I'll tell you. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. I wish, I, mean, every, I wish everybody in the world could have a day like that. I can I feel really like it getting sworn in as mayor, the same thing. Everybody's yeah. there. Your friends are there. Your family's there. Yeah. And, and, you know, we like what we do. We like who we do it with. Right. And exactly that's, right. We don't have to work. We don't, exactly. I don't think we work. No. You come to work, it's, it's not work. It's, it's exactly. I'm going to go do some stuff with my friends. Well, you congratulations. Know, this will wrap up our show. Uh, congratulations yeah, on right. being the assembly thanks speaker. For, it's a terrific honor. Uh, thank you for watching Around the Best Town. This is John McCormick, your mayor. My guest has been new Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin. Thanks for watching.